What happened to the yard boobs? The Metropolitan Blues Quartet, which include Keith Relf on vocals and harmonica, Paul Samuel Smith on lead guitar, Jim McCarty on drums, and Larry Gaines on rhythm guitar, created the Yardbirds in London in 1962. Larry Gaines was replaced by Chris Dreja shortly after, while lead guitarist Paul Samuel Smith switched to bass guitar after a young Eric Clapton advised him after a show that he would never play lead guitar again. As a result, guitarist Tony Topham took over for Samuel Smith. The Metropolitan Blues Quartet quickly established themselves in the burgeoning London blues scene, performing alongside the Rolling Stones at venues such as the Crawdaddy Club in Richmond, with a set that included Delta and Chicago blues classics by Muddy Waters and Howling Wolf, as well as rock and roll material by Chuck Berry and Eddie Boyd. In late 1963, Anthony Topham, who was 16 years old at the time, was forced to leave the band by his parents in order to focus on his studies, and was replaced by young guard student and Roosters guitarist Eric Clapton. With Eric Clapton on board, the band would become one of the most talented rhythm and blues outfits in the UK. During this time, the band was managed by Giorgio Gamelski, who had previously managed the Crawdaddy Club and the Rolling Stones. On the 6th of February 1964, the Yardbirds made their debut at the Marquee Club, beginning a four-month Friday residency that made them the club's most popular band as everyone in town was talking about the miracles of the young guitarist named Eric Clapton. On the 5th of March 1964, the band was also the last to perform at the club's original location on 165 Oxford Street. At the same time, they got a record deal with EMI Columbia, and on March 13, 1964, they recorded their renowned debut album, Five Little Yardbirds, live at the opening night of the new Marquee Club at 90 Wardour Street. Long John Baldry and the Hoochie Coochie Men, featuring Rod Stewart, and American blues artist Sonny Boy Williamson, invited the band to support him on a UK and German summer tour a few months later, also performed on that night. In December of that same year, Eric Clapton released his first album, Five Little Yardbirds, which was his very first recording. The Yardbirds also performed at the 4th National Jazz and Blues Festival in Richmond in August of that year, which was co-hosted by the National Jazz Federation and the Marquee Club. Following the tour, the Yardbirds returned to the Marquee for a second one-month residency on September 4th, 1964, and issued a string of hit songs, including the pop international hit For Your Love, which was released in the United States in 1965. They performed at the 5th National Jazz and Blues Festival in Richmond in August of the same year. Eric Clapton, who left the band that same year to join John Mayall's Blues Breakers, the most famous British blues outfit at the time, who have had a Monday residency at the Marquis since 1963, was dissatisfied with the band's shift to pop. Clapton's departure left a large void, which was filled by a revolutionary guitarist named Jeff Beck, who was at the time the most renowned British guitarist. First and foremost, Clapton had advised the band to hire Jimmy Page, a skilled studio guitarist with whom he had previously collaborated in a series of blues guitar duets. With this wild, forceful, and fresh guitar approach, as well as pioneering experimental techniques with buzz tone, feedback, and distortion, Jeff Beck was the one to enter the picture and lead the band to psychedelic territory. The live album The Yardbirds with Sonny Boy Williamson, which was recorded in 1963, was released in 1966. The Yardbirds' second album, The Yardbirds, also known as Roger the Engineer, was released the same year, and it took the band into near-experimental territory. Contain elements from Indian music, early psychedelic music, and chamber music. Before the record sessions, Paul Samuel Smith left the band to pursue a successful career as a music producer. The Yardbirds played their final show at the Marquee Club on June 21, 1966, while they also performed at the 6th National Jazz and Blues Festival in Berkshire in August of that year. Jimmy Page eventually joined the band as a bass player until guitarist Chris Dreja became more comfortable with the instrument. The Yardbirds, including Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck, performed in a club in Michelangelo Antonioni's 1967 film Blow Up, which is regarded as one of the best seminal pop art films of the time and features the Yardbirds, including Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck. Soon after, Jeff Beck was fired from the band and he won't have a successful solo career. He was replaced by Jimmy Page, who was at the time experimenting with different guitar techniques, including the use of violin and cello bows, 
as well as the use of the wah-wah pedal. The Yardbirds released their final album, Little Games, in 1967 and dissolved in early 1968 after a period of record company pressures and drug-related difficulties. Jimmy Page's new band, The New Yardbirds, debuted at the Marquee Club on October 18, 1968, with Robert Plant on vocals, John Paul Jones on bass and keyboards, and John Bonham on drums. Under the renowned name of Led Zeppelin, the band embarked on their first American tour. In 1980, Jim McCarty, Paul Samuel Smith, and Chris Dreja reformed as Box of Frogs with Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page on occasion. On June 22, 1983, the band returned to the marquee for one gig, coinciding with the club's 25th anniversary celebration. In 1992, the Yardbirds were voted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2003, the Yardbirds released the album Birdland, which featured Jeff Beck on one track and featured Chris Dreja, Jim McCarty, and new members Jippy Mayo on lead guitar and backup vocals, John Iden on bass and lead vocals, and Alan Glenn on harmonica and backing vocals. Following the Yardbirds' breakup, Paul Samuel Smith established himself as a respected producer, working with artists such as Cat Stevens, Renaissance, Claire Hamill, and Amazing Blondell. After declining an opportunity to join Jimmy Page's Led Zeppelin, Chris Dreja became a professional photographer. He photographed the band for their debut album's back cover. In 1969, Keith Relf founded the renowned folk rock band Renaissance, which went on to release many studio albums including Renaissance in 1969, Illusion in 1971, Prologue in 1972, Ashes Are Burning in 1973, Turn of the Cards in 1974, and many more. Between 1969 and 1972, Renaissance played at the Marquee Club, and in 1969, they even had a Monday residency there. Ralph formed the band Armageddon in 1975 after working with Medicine Head with Martin Pugh on guitar, Bobby Caldwell on drums and vocals, and Louis Cinemo on bass, and released their debut album the same year. Keith Relf, who had emphysema and was in terrible condition, died a few months after leaving the band on May 14, 1976, when he was electrocuted while playing guitar during the recordings for Jim McCarty's new band, Illusion, as home studio in London. In 1969, Jim McCarty was a founding member of Renaissance. In 1988, he was a member of the band Stairway and Illusion. In 1990, he became a member of the band Illusion. He released his solo album, Out of the Dark, in 1994. With Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood, Mick Waller, and Nicky Hopkins, Jeff Beck founded the Jeff Beck Group in 1967, recording the albums Truth in 1968 and Beckola in 1969, and performing at the marquee multiple times between 1967 and 1969. Beck founded the Beck, Boger, and Apiche Power Trio in 1972, with Carmine Apiche on percussion and Tim Bogert on bass. Later in his career, he established himself as one of rock music's most brilliant guitarists, releasing more than 10 studio albums including Rough and Ready in 1971, Blow by Blow in 1975, Wired in 1976, There and Back in 1980, Beckology in 1991, and Jeff in 2003. Jan Hammer, Rod Stewart, Les Paul, and Sidney Lauper are among the musicians with whom he has collaborated with. Throughout his career, he has also received four Grammy Awards. With Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page became one of the most iconic and influential guitarists in rock music history, creating eight legendary studio albums. He was a member of XYZ, a project with XYS members Chris Squire and Alan White that never saw the light of day in 1981. Page was a member of Paul Rogers' band The Firm in 1985. Graham Nash, The Rolling Stones, Box of Frogs, David Coverdale, and The Black Crows are among Jimmy Page's collaborators over the years. He recorded the albums No Quarter in 1994 and Walking Into Clarksdale in 1998 with Robert Plant as well as collaborating with Plant as The Honey Drippers. Eric Clapton is regarded as one of the best guitarists in the world today. He debuted with his iconic band Cream at the Marquee Club in June 1966 after leaving the Yardbirds. Later, with Ginger Baker, Steve Winwood, and Rick Greck, he created the supergroup Blind Faith. 
Clapton went on to have a long and illustrious solo career. Derek and the Dominoes was created in 1970 to release the acclaimed album Layla and Other Love Songs. The Beatles, John Lennon, Howling Wolf, Stevie Ray, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, and Stephen Stills are just a few of the artists with whom he has worked with. And that's what happened to the Yardbirds. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me some of your favorite Yardbird songs. And let me know, who should I do next on this channel? Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.